Williams into Wales. Wales through a goal. Slossie beyond Fodringham. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, Adolfi. He can hit them. And he does. Oh! Hello everybody, welcome back to New York Talk. This is the Rome United Podcast and we've got a mailbag episode. We've got some questions, we're going to go through them. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Um, thank you for being with us. Mick is back with us. How have you enjoyed the international break, Mick? Uh, it's been great, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been absolutely great. We haven't lost for a week now. It's amazing. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, everything else outside of football is going great at the minute. Um, just showing it's a Rotherham thing. But it's international break, and uh, England are showing us exactly why uh, we should never get a rope up for international football uh, because we're English, and that's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair enough. Hey, Tom, how are you doing, Tom? Yeah, good, good. I'm. Um, yeah, same spirits as those two in that. Very nice, <laughs> very nice of an international break. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got YouTube user uh, Martin Holland, Sarah Ogden, Kelly for Bob's, John Hinchley for Noel, and Kimmy are all with us. Um, thank you all for being with us. I said it's a like episode, so we will go through the questions as we have them. Um, more serious than last time. You know, and people must not have liked the wow. Barry Bannon side, Nicholas Gitches and things like that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we will plough through them um, tonight. Mick, we have one to seven. Which question, which number would you like? Oh, straight into it. Right, yes. Uh, well, do, you else, do you want to tell everybody about yeah. your Dusseldorf week trip? Not particularly, no. It's been all right. I've been away okay. uh, on my own international break. That's it. <laughs> Basically, mixed been to Germany to try and scope out locations for the Euros of this summer. I, I, well, I've been to one of their stadiums, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. The, the, the Dusseldorf yeah, yeah. Stadium. It's a hell of a stadium, that. I couldn't mm. believe it. Very nice. Very, Very nice. nice. Saw somebody break his leg. <laughs> that went nice. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really nasty. But, uh, yeah, apart from that, no, it's been, a, it's been excellent. Very nice. Anyway, number six. Anyway. Number six. Uh, this is a question from Sean Hadrill. He says, do you think we should be experimenting with different players the next few games and try out what Richardson wants for the next season? Go 4-4-2, for example, or 4-5-1, Nombe and Bramall on the wings with Sarika, Sariki and Appiah to come on. Um, make thoughts, is it time to mix it up a little bit or is it, do you think it's possible, well, the way I see it is, is waiting for the season to be actually over? And I know we are down, but we're not down. So maybe he's, he's got to sort of half take it seriously until then. I don't know. I don't know. It, I, we, I think we have had, we've had this conversation previously, haven't we, about trying out other players, different formations or whatever. Um, you, you, you're trying a different formation. You're playing with the same players, essentially. Mm. Uh, most of them are not going to be here next season. So yeah. it, it, it doesn't really seem to be... But there doesn't seem to be much point to it, to be honest with you. Sariki's not going to be with us. I wouldn't have thought next year, but it may be dependent on on what Sheffield United, what happens to Sheffield United come the end of this season, which will probably be the championship. Um, so, yeah, for me, I think it's just a question of toughing it out for the rest of the season. See if we can get anything out of it. See if we can beat that um, that twenty three point total. Um, with a chance we could match, we could we could at least match that if not to if not yeah. beat it. But, nah. the, promise, the promised land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly that. <laughs> um, yeah. No, nah, just just keep going and hope that it finishes sooner rather than later. I think. Hmm. Um, Shelley says yes. The one thousand penalty should be trying something different. It hasn't worked the way he's he's done it so far. I suppose, Danny, but changing it now is not like Mick says. 
we're going we're gonna to go through who we think is going to be here next season. Most of them are not going to be here next season. So what is the point in trying something new? And all oh, this really works. Appy is really good in this position. And Sam Klukas is really good in this position. Oh, but none of them are really going to be here next year. So it, it almost seems a bit pointless trying that something new. Because if it works, we're then chasing something that really exists for next season. Yeah, yeah I suppose you're right. Well, at the same time... Um... It might allow Richardson to experiment with um, flexibility, formation-wise, mm-hmm. um, and and also see which players he'd like to keep for, like, say, flexibility. You know, if he tries to loose in a different position, it's like, oh, actually, he can do a job really well there. Um, there might be a bit more incentive to keep him for next season, even though his contract's up. Um, and this season, it might sway him a little bit more on certain players anyway. Um, but I think he will have to <clears throat> change part of it due to the Christ Tye issue, which a few people have mentioned in the comments as well. It is on his new Instagram page. It's been a, a hell of an international break so far. Yeah. For him. He got his Instagram hacked. Um, yeah. And then his first post on his new account, he's, he's said that he's out for the season. So it's just like, oh, okay. Mm. Um, but it's, it's interesting that it's come via Insta and not the club. Which I think there's been no, there's been no presser though, has there? Mm. True. That's another, that's another way these kind of things come out is through a presser. True, true. So it might be in something what Thursday this coming week potentially on it. Uh, Wednesday we play play Friday, don't we? This week. So oh yeah, Wednesday. yeah, yeah. It'll be Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but no, it's a shame if he's out. If he's well and truly out for the season, it's a shame. But we've just said about Richardson shaking it up a little bit. He might have to now mm. because he's not got Tays the anchor in midfield. He's going to have to play. Um, not a vastly different midfield, but a di- certainly a different system. Um, and if that ends up uh, playing into our favour, which it might do, it might not, uh, that also gives him a headache for next season. Because mm. Tay is a player that he knows, but now he's going to have to play without him. So what's his next move? Mm. Yeah. To be fair, Tom, he did try. He did the formation for the last game, I think, again, I mentioned, I think you were forced into it with um, Hacks being not fully available. But he did try something. I don't. I still don't know what the formation was. Four two three one. <laughs> four two two. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but there is. He has shown in that last game that he did try something different. And I know Huddersfield weren't very good, but we did pick up a point. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I think the only real change you could say he made was he went for a four back, and that's. I think all he could do really with the players available. Um, maybe with Blackett coming back, he he might go back to a five. Who knows? It's. Really tough to, to say what I mean personally. I don't know what the hell I'd do. Um, as a manager, I guess you see it week in, week out, so he might have a better clue, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Going to a four back, which seemed a bit, um, <clears throat> I, I don't know, it's 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 weird. I, I feel like a five back or three back, whatever it is, a five back is, is a lot more mm. rigid and a, you can't really be fluid with it, really. And I think having a four back is suits suits the sta- suits our players better um mm. the only issue is we don't have wingers and we've said that all season and we still yeah. don't have any wingers um so that's where you know you might want to experiment with i don't know bramall on left wing and mm. Zeriki on the right wing or something or something like that and that's that's all that i'd really say that you can do mm. but um Shelley's just said it there. Put, putting hats back into midfield is probably the best thing that we could do at the minute. It's yeah. with Blackett coming back, especially we have the players in at the back to to free him up. And I mean, <clears throat> he's been fantastic, arguably player of the season, and I'm counting Victor in that. Um, he's probably been our player of the season, and having him at centre half has been fantastic. But it's really limited his actual ability, which is mm. just strange to say. Um, we've we've missed a driving force in midfield. Um, so I put him back in there for the rest of the season just so he gets adapts to that again for next season. Mm, yeah, I think when injuries coming back, we can the five makes more sense. You've got Bramall, who is an out and out wing back, who can who was back and ready to go. You've got Tal Black, who can then again is a natural center half who can go back into there. So then the five at the back looks so much more natural, whether it's Revan or Bramall, then the then you don't need to change anything because you've got your almost your strongest back five available. Which well, probably is your strongest back five, isn't it? To be fair, hmm. um, yeah. Uh, Danny, do you want to pick his next number one to six? Oh, let's go for number one. Number one, Chris from uh, up on the Discord group. He, ha- he asks, with Ayala leaving, who are your top five worst value signings for Rotherham United? Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. 
<clears throat> now, the, quick, the interesting question there is value because Iola costs us nothing, basically. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, should, no. should, should, we twist, should we twist it and say value to the team overall then? Possibly. We could do that. Yeah, go on then. I don't, we'll get five between us. I'm sure we get five between us. The, the obvious mm. one is Dexter Black stuck in it. Let's just yep. get the elephant out of the room for a minute. Uh, <laughs> that's, no, that's me gone then. <laughs> <laughs> While everybody thinks, Mick, just talk to everybody, everybody who didn't see Dexter Black, Black stop play. What was the problem with Dexter Black? Because is it... He's, he's had a brilliant career, excellent career. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we were too big for him. Oh no, sorry, other way around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's, there's him and Gabby Agbonglahor as well, isn't he? You know, <laughs> okay. a waste of space pair of them. To be honest. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, include Ayala in there just because that saves us picking another one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll give you another one. And I said, this Tom Pope has got to be in there as well, sadly. Mm. Uh, it was a club record signing, only 150k, but was a club record signing and scored more goals against us in one game than he did in his <laughs> entire Rotherham career as a striker. Don't let Alfie hear you say that. <laughs> I know Alfie loved him, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did. He did. <laughs> Yeah, uh, maybe it was a good man. He just wasn't a good fit for us. Yeah, well, yeah, I just think club record signing. Nombe is feeling the same kind of thing at the minute. And he's a club record signing. You expect something a bit special, and that special never really came from from Pope. Mm-hmm. Kelly Pope says Kenny Jacket. <laughs> he can be the manager of this weird <laughs> <fab> side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Tom, anybody? Um, a couple. I think George Hurst is in with a shout. Fantastic shout. So, um, yeah. Just simply for how many games he played and how little he did, um, I think one I'll go off your your vibe, Matt, in, in Jordan Bowery, again another mm. club record signing mm. at the time, and now plays right back for Mansfield, but we signed him as a striker. <laughs> so, <laughs> very bizarre. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a very very bizarre transfer that actually happened. Um, mm. And I think he, he played. He was there for a couple of years, wasn't he? Was three or four yeah. years. Well, maybe less than four. Maybe two or three years. Mm. Um, uh, another another rogue one because at the time I don't think he was actually too bad. But Joseph Zoon, a couple Florian Joseph Zoon, a couple Florian, seasons yeah. ago, mm. I, th- I thought he was. <clears throat> I thought he had the makings to be a really good player, and then played mm. like twenty odd times and did nothing. <laughs> Somebody's yeah, just matched me in the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He was a weird player because he he had pace, was both footed, and then never actually did anything really. Mm. His final third play was always a bit. But that's thing is this, this is just snippets that you remember he might have actually been you know a de- you know better than some players that we're forgetting mm. but <clears throat> yeah off the top of my head it's them three i would flood up yes i think he set up crooks in court and uh, he set up crooks for a winner fairly early on the season i think you're right we all sort of think that we've got a, we've got a player on his hands here and it never never quite worked out um yeah Sarah, I think I think those, those that remember gisbert boss <clears throat> Sarah, i think my other one gisbert white boots boss <laughs> yeah so um, before white boots were famous and, and popular, everybody yeah. had black boots apart from Argus, but <laughs> it was back in the day when you, if you had different coloured boots, you had to you had to be good to earn yeah. it. And uh yeah, it didn't work if it wasn't. <laughs> um yeah. Um Christel says I'll have an app here. Um ah. Pokemon Pig says George Kerr. Mick George Kerr. I, was I, was right. I thought George Kerr was manager. Well, Ken Jacket were managed. We've had Ken Jacket in there. Yeah. I might be wrong. I don't know. Um, Shirley says Tom Thorpe was another one who had loads of promise. I think, he, I think he came from Manu. It was Manu's under 23s captain or something like that and came and mm. was yeah. one of um, Stubbs's disasters. Alfie says, other than the Papa John's Saddler, Kieran Saddler, the Papa John's King. Yeah. Um, uh, Martin Holland says, Blue Becky. Yeah. He was good when he was fit. He just got he had a disastrous time with injuries, didn't he? Um mm. Matt Mellon says, yeah, George Kerr was the manager. Well he was, yeah. yeah. Uh Danny, anybody you want to give a shout out to this you know, um, digging people out here, I suppose. But... <laughs> I've I've got a couple. Um my first one's Darnell Fisher. Mm. Um 
Okay. Who <laughs> legit had the the attitude of a slapped ass when it whilst he was here <laughs> as a footballer. Um, uh, wasn't it Paul Davies who put it in an article like he's like the worst human being ever to try an interview, uh, <laughs> which is like a bold, very bold claim. Um, mm. But I'm also going to say Matt Palmer as well. Oh, um, I like Matt Palmer. We, we oh, signed him as the yeah. We, we, yeah he had he had a he had massive boost to fill because we signed him as yeah. Frex replacement, didn't mm-hmm. we? Uh, and then he never hit the heights because then, then suddenly Wiles burst onto the scene. It was just very mm. underwhelming, um, mm. and he never really got a chance. So. <clears throat> Yeah, he cost a pretty penny from Burton as well, didn't he, Matt Palmer? He cost a mm. bit. I don't know. What, I don't. Know. They never actually announced it. Uh, but he, he mm. certainly, certainly cost some money. Yeah, um, I, I do feel sorry for him in one sense because it was like the stopgap number eight until Wiles got that shirt. Yeah. Um, but it was just very underwhelming as as like what we were used to from a from mm. a player in that position. Oh, Joshua Caswell in the comments, Curtis Till, banging yeah. shout, banging <laughs> shout. Yeah, um, Don if Ball. Richard, if Richardson resigns him, I'm going to scream. Ah, uh, Don Ball. I'll, I'll throw in there another stub signing. Mm. He's he's having massive promise. He, I think he just got to the cup final with Rangers. Um, I've been on loan from Spurs. We paid a bit of money for him from Spurs, and and that didn't work out either. Mm. Um, blame Stubbs. Alfie says Purrington. Yeah, that didn't really work yeah. out either. Sadly, um, Harry says Bowler. That's harsh. Is mm. Same, same uh, as Palmer, I think, though. Yeah, Probably. it's one of yeah, it's where the, the potential weren't wasn't oh. really lived up to. Jamal Sorry. Blackman. That's yeah, right. Jamal Blackman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The problem for him is he had Victor breathing down his neck, didn't he? Mm. Um in, in in hindsight, how did he keep Victor out of from playing a full season? Mm. Yeah, mad. Uh, and then Josh Dickers were playing number three to those two. Yeah. yeah, that was a weird season, man. <laughs> uh, what, yeah, what's everything the... about that season was weird. Yeah. What, what's the top five, then? If, oh, if oh, we're oh, actually right. answering the question. We're just naming <laughs> people at this point, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, well, next to Black Sox's got to be in there, aren't it? I think we're going okay, to so one. It, 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 we'll make, make it a five-a-side team, so we'll have Kenny Jacket as manager, Black Stock okay, up top. Okay, sick. Yeah. Um, and you keep on Blackman. You Blackman, didn't you? Yeah, Blackman, Blackman is keeper. In, so keeper, Blackman. Donald Fisher as a defender. Yeah. Uh, this is Tilt. Tilt, yeah. yeah. Oh, tilt, tilt or Ayala, though. I go Tilt just because we paid cash for him. Mm. <laughs> okay. Huh? Uh, you still need one more. Gisbert. Gisbert, oh, Gisbert up front will never score again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Cal- oh. Uh, Josh, 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 Josh Castle on for Jake Hasty. You know, Jake Hasty. Again, on loan from mm. Rangers. Mm. He's got two in two or two or three and three or something like that. I think th- then... he's got the absolute screamer against Sunderland, didn't he? Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And disappeared off the face of the earth. He's yeah. in the yeah. league of Scotland now, I think. Or something was last time last I checked. Um usually I think says Keller Roos. That's not a bad shout. Mm. Yeah. That was another classic Steve Evans um uh, loan signing. Um yeah. Right. We'll maybe come to the Chelsea Pro question, we'll maybe come to that. Uh, anyway, we'll go, and go back to other people's questions we have sent in. Tom, what have we got? One to five. Three. Three. Seth. Middle. Seth on X from we'll put this on an X. Should we start to rebuild now? He says new management team, etc. Uh, he says he's made t- made the team worse with panic buys. Um I assume your answer is gonna be no, Tom, but feel free to disagree with me. Do you think we should be time for a change? As in management or players or what? Well, um, if management management team, it says. Uh, no. Um, I'd say it's an interesting one. I mean, would, <clears throat> so Richardson's brought in Kelly. Rob Kelly? It's not Kelly, I don't know. Uh, it's not like, Kelly. Mm. Yeah. Um, and he's kept the goalkeeper coach and the first team coach. And it, I, I always thought it was interesting because they're not his coaches. And there's mm. still that little bit of... Um, you're kind of still holding on to the bitterness of and the of the culture before, mm. and I, I don't know. I always found it a bit of a um, it, it's always an interesting one because I think we we must have paid money for Green, um, the first team coach, I assume, which is, is why yeah. that's kept, which is why we've kept him around. But I don't know. Going forward, do you keep them both? Do you keep the goalkeeper coach and the um first team coach? I mean, he, he's got the, Green's got a good pedigree, um, I guess, but. Like I said, you've got to mix that in with the the whole. If you want a fresh start, you've got to, you've got to have a fresh start. Mm-hmm. Um, where I, I don't, 
you know, forgive me if I'm a bit naive here, but I don't know if the goalkeeper coach matters too much. I think Scott Brown's been doing a, a decent job of it. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about changing that. But it's, it's an interesting one because I don't know the ins and outs of a football team. I don't know who you'd bring in, in, in as a first team coach. If there is anyone even better on the market than than Green for what we can afford, what we can mm. use, so to say, um, <clears throat> so that's 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 the only interesting restructure I think you'd go ahead with saying. Um, do you bring in two assistant managers? You know, a lot of clubs adapt, are adapting to that now and have a, a first team coach and two assistant managers and then a and then a head coach. So is that something that we go for? I, I don't know. It's it's interesting. It's something I'd like to see happen. I think the more backroom staff, the better. I mean, obviously, it's a bit more on the wage bill, but sometimes you've just got to take that hit and just hope that it pays off. I, it's something that I thought we should be looking at is, is getting two, two assistant managers. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a tough question because you don't really know until you start the new season. And whatever happens, you've just got to trust it, uh, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, in, in terms of player restructure, we, w- we won't know anything until we get the retained list. So I don't think it's worthwhile really talking about it. I mean, we can we can discuss who we want to stay and who we want to leave, but that's a whole different. I'm, I'm sure we got a question on that somewhere down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting, Scott. I mean, I seen that I Derby Paul Warren's brought in Dale Tong uh, as another. As, I assume another assistant, another coach in this. He's got mm. Richard Barker and Anshaw are still there, as far as I'm aware. So they've got an extra body than what it, we had here. Um, mm. and Matt Taylor's got an assistant manager, and he's brought Wayne Carlisle in as well as as a separate kind of coach as well yeah he's like a development coach isn't he or something? yeah yeah mm. um yeah he said in the question there Mick, that he's brought in panic buys i mean i suppose you could say that but he had to bring in somebody he had to bring in players we can all whinge and moan about charlie white but we needed that body through the door we needed an available body through the door mm. You can also say that Sariq is not playing games, but we need the option. Sariq is, although he's not played very much, he's been very useful in terms of filling in for Kyoso and, and other people. Mm-hmm. So, and Rinamoto has been been really, really good. Mm-hmm. He's only brought in three players, and I think each, each one in their own way, as they haven't been brilliant, but they've been useful as a, as squad players. I wouldn't necessarily call them panic buys. No, I wouldn't either. Um, I wouldn't. And if we'd not brought anybody in, then it would have been we'd have been in, getting stick for that as well. So. Um, I think Rinomoto has been a, a massive addition to the squad, to be honest with you. Um, really, really, a really decent player. Uh, looks good and out of contract in summer, so hopefully he's somebody that we might be able to look to uh, for next season. Fingers crossed, unless he's got some championship interest, which of course he might He might well do. Um, I, 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 look, as far as changing the management structure is concerned, changing the manager or, or anything like it for me, no, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. I don't want to get on that merry-go-round. We're already on it in terms of the many managers we've had in in two years, two seasons. We're on to our third, third, possibly four, if you count caretaker managers, um, in, in space of two seasons. And I don't want to be on that route. Um, I, I think Liam Richardson needs needs to be given at least a season to, uh, to see what he can do um, after what he inherited. Um, the situation that he inherited. Um, I, so, no, so I don't. I don't see personally. I don't want to see any change. I'm not saying I don't see the need for it because we bought my league. We haven't won in however many games, etc., etc., etc. You know, I hear. It, I, I understand all that. I get all that. Um, but um, no, I, I want to see some consistency. Some a steady head for a while. Um, let's see what we can do with what we've got or what we're going to be able to get in the summer. I know the Lord only knows what that's going to be. Um, we'll have to wait and see on that one, won't we? But no, I don't, I don't think we should be uh, we should be changing anything at the moment. Okay. Um, he tweeted yesterday, didn't he, William Richardson, about congratulating Chesterfield on their promotion? Um, yeah, he did. And got pelters for it, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, I just, I mean, he, 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 come on. Uh, he, it's not like he didn't use to be assistant manager there, did he? Or, or... He didn't. You're, right, you're absolutely right. He, he, if you he tried, you know, I'd contact this is going to upset me because oh, this is why we're going for it. Um, he hasn't tweeted about Rotherham United ever, uh, but he's congratulated Chesterfield on their promotion. Um... It, I mean, 
I congratulated Chesterfield on the promotion. Yeah, but you're no. not in charge of a team that's getting rock bottom anyway. I, I, and? I, 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 I'm aware it doesn't really matter. I also quite like Correct. it. Correct. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, but again, you've got to understand that people are going to get upset about certain things, and there were people are always going to get upset about that. It's not like they're not like a local rival. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, I, 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 anyway, let's move on. Should we just move on? Yeah. <laughs> Danny, anything you want to add on the, on the, on the question of changing the management structure? Uh, no. <clears throat> um, but I would like to add something, but my answer is no, we shouldn't change it. Um, because, like Tom said, it's not really a, um, a massive practice to uproot an entire management system. Um, it was very rare that Paul Warren did it to us and just took everybody. Um, and we had to like sort of chop and change goalkeeper coach a little bit because I, f- I forget his name, which is really bad. Um, but they all came in, yeah, Billy Mercer. Yeah. That's it, Billy Mercer. That's it. Um, so we sort of had to chop and change it until um, we got the, the mate of Matt Taylor's in. Um, but e- even then, I mean, the first team coach and the goalkeeper coach, I think it's sometimes good to have that area of football having different ideas to your head coach side of things mm. because it's better to have um, different ideas on the table and sometimes just going right we're going to do it this way and that's it because, because then it football becomes one dimensional and not subject to change maybe that why that's that's why richardson's just started to change formation a little bit through all their ideas of other people mm. uh, obviously he's got his own assistant in which is a lot more common um but yeah, he's been dealt a bad hand um, and just go again next season. And I don't think the signings he brought in were panic buys. I think it's actually the best that he could muster. He's another one, another player that he's got a really good relationship with that was out of favour at Wigan, um, who he thought would be a good fit, but just hasn't uh, hit the ground yet. Riminota, who's been the best of the bunch, I think. And then uh, the young lad from Sheffield United, who... Again, you can put it down to youth and inexperience. Why is A, not playing him as much as we want him to? But also why um, it's um, a bit flash and no bang sometimes with him. But there is a player there for sure. Mm. I spoke to a lot of Sheffield United fans and they say there's a player there, absolutely. So maybe that's another one for next season. You know, yeah. come, uh, come with us down to League One, but you'll get played a lot more. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, I think th- this, this season... For me, anyway, whether it's management, players, whatever, it's going to have to just call it a write-off and go again next season. Yeah. As much as we don't want it to be, because you know everyone loves to stay up in the championship, we have to call it now and just go, yep, yeah, it's a write-off. We can play our hearts out every game as much as we try to or as much as they say that they're going to try to. Um, but long and short it is, uh, we'll be in League One next season, barring a miracle. And I'm sure everything's underway to try and get players or any extra coaches in that will assist it with us as well. Um, so just leave it be and get 10 games next season. If we're bottom end of League One next season, it's not worked. And then we have to look at other options, but just give it a chance. Mm. Fair. Um, Sarah Ogden says, Green Motor apparently lives in Sheffield, but it lives local now. It could, could work out in favour. Um, yes, you're right. But bear in mind, if there's a good season for us, Sheffield Wednesday will be stiffing in because obviously, if it's done well with Rotherham, he'll be on their list. So just bear yeah. that in mind. <laughs> um, Mick, one to four. Uh, two. Two. This is from Lee C. He says, Would you guys prefer a financially solid team that has peaks and troughs or a club laden with debt that has championship mediocrity guaranteed with a, little, with a chance of, of better? I think I know you answered this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've been there, done that. We've been there, done that to football club laden with debt. Um with bad bad um bad ownership decisions or bad decisions made by owners, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh I'm happy to bounce up and down, quite frankly. As long as we can continue to bounce up after mm. we bounce down, you know. Um, some of the best times of my life supporting this football club have been over the last 12 years. Um, we're currently going through one of the worst, hmm. but you know, I, I keep saying it, <laughs> they make the, it makes the good times better. Well, I want a football club more than anything else in the world. I want a football club to support 
Um, and what I don't want is is what I see happening to other football clubs across up and down the country. You know, the ones that have already gone out of business, the one that ones that look like they might go out of business. And then when you look through the championship, you know, the the, the day of reckoning is going to come for more of these football clubs, isn't it? It is only a matter of time. The starting, you know, when we were in when we were in financial difficulties back in the, the sort of nineties, that it was the exception, not the rule. You know, it was very rare that clubs really got into the sort of situation that we got into. It's becoming more and more common now as as time goes on, and it's getting higher and higher up the the pyramid where these clubs are falling from. Um, and I don't want that again for my football club. I just don't, you know. I, I don't. I don't want it for me. I don't want it for my kids, my grandkids, and, and anybody else that follows on afterwards to have to start worrying about, you know, where we're going to go to watch our football. You know, we live in Rotherham. We support Rotherham, and and I want Rotherham to be there as a sustainable football club. So whilst it, it would be great to have somebody come in and spend all their money for my entertainment um, and buy all these fantastic players and, you know, just spend money like it's going out of fashion. But th there's never going to be a return on that because we're never going to get 50,000 supporters in every week to to, to get that. So we're, we're in a, posi a position where we just need to maintain the status quo financially and that's going to mean probably round about the lowest wage bill in the championship, one of the higher wage bills in the, in League One. You know, we need a League One A, don't we? Championship B or whatever it is. Um, but that, that, that's obviously that's not going to happen. So, But what may well happen is there'll be some more Reddings coming around the corner. That is inevitable, I think. And I don't want our club to be one of them. No. Mm. Uh, I think yeah. I think what Mick's trying to say is that we did administration before it was cool. <laughs> Twice, yeah, we did. Twice, <laughs> yeah. We threw everybody in the way, didn't we? And, and and you know the other two that clubs that did that, Luton have managed to find their way up to the um, the Premier League. Bournemouth have managed to find their way up to the Premier League and now trying to put ladder up behind them. Um, just I'll get that one in. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, it, there, there are so many. Uh, Sarah, Sarah's mentioned it here. She's absolutely right. There's so many clubs living on borrowed time at the moment, mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't want I don't want my club to be like that. And if that means having to take the take the grief from from all these kids and who, who've never known anything other than what we've got now and want us to kick on and don't understand the the dangers that are associated with it financially. Then I'll take that grief because in 10, 15, 20 years' time, we'll still have a football club. Um, it might only be a League Two or a League One football club, but it will be a football club and there will be supporters up and down the country who don't have one anymore. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen teams taking risks, Danny. I mean, how many teams, even in Premier League, can fall and foul of financial fair play? Mm. Uh, less, even Leicester are going to have issues this season. We all know the struggles that we're going to have, we all know the struggles that Redden have had. Are having sorry, um, we all want Tony Stewart to pop a bit more money and or some you know, sugar daddy from America to put 100 million quid like they've done at, like they've done at Ipswich. Um, but it's just you've got to take it as it is for me. And we are you've got to know what you are, and we're not mm. going to attract 100 million pounds for 40 percent of the company like Ipswich have done. It's just it's just not going to happen. Not saying there aren't investors out there, but it's just going to be kind of realistic and just accept where you are, hope for the best, and like to make sense, just keep going, keep going, and keep supporting the club. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly that. I mean, yeah, it's nice to be successful in football. It'd be nice to be challenging for the playoffs in the Championship with that carrot of the Premier League dangling uh, on occasion. And some clubs have got there, and they, but we've spent hugely to get there anyway. Um, I mean, we say about Luton and Bournemouth, but they've had a lot of money pumped into them to get there. Um, yeah, they were in the same situation of, as us, but you know, and the the stadiums aren't that much bigger than us. But they seem in more of an isolated location. You know, there isn't a, a complete smattering of massive clubs around Bournemouth or Luton that are right on the doorstep. Mm -hmm. You know, how far away? How far away is Southampton and Portsmouth from Bournemouth? 
you know, or how far away is Brighton uh, and how far away is um, wherever from Luton, who are all sort of like on their own in the mm. country. Whereas we've got um, three uh, three clubs that are historically a lot bigger than us, plus Doncaster, that's right on our doorstep. Um, so that's what we're competing against. You know, even though Rotherham is a football in town at the minute, it's always had that record of not being the most successful with football. We've just sort of been there, you know, um, and that's what it is. You know, we just we are we are legit a small football club that's at the minute punching above the weight quite massively in the championship. Um, and it's sort of come to light that there are elements of the football club that just needs pulling a bit higher up. Mm. Um, and once we've fixed that, we'll be even more consistent. But I'm going to echo what Mick said. I'd rather have a football club to support rather than spending big and then going bust. You know, mm. I've seen it with far too many clubs where they've just absolutely plummeted just from spending beyond the means um, to the point where some clubs have nearly disappeared. You know, I know Scunthorpe's a club not to, that right. much smaller than mm. us and they've completely disappeared. It's not that long ago. They were completing in the playoff semi-finals to get to the championship against us and now they're in National League North. You know, I'd, I'd rather have um, the, the ups and downs rather than spending beyond a means and eventually the bubble will burst. Mm. Yeah. Um... Alfie says, the international break makes you wonder what you do on Saturday afternoons without football. It's awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, John F. <laughs> says, I stood outside Millmore with the buckets never again. I remember being stood, uh, sat in the, in the new new main stand that's half built. And I think, I think we were playing Port Vale or something like that. And I think it's turned to Mick. Our, uh, and I says, this might be the last time we ever come to Millmore. Because there were a meeting like three or four days later to determine whether we were going to be allowed to go into administration with the, the, the creditors were going to allow that. Mm. And I under that son that's us going, oh, we have, you know, come on with kids. Remember what, you know, remember it really bad. And I, you shoot for the stars, guys, but remember, you got to understand where we came from as well uh, to appreciate it. Tom, mm. I suspect you, you, you remember those really bad days? No. So my, my whole thing is that I was about five or six when that all went down. Mm. So as I was getting into football and going to games and stuff, I, I'm, um, my dad stopped taking me because everything happened and it all mm. capitulated and whatnot. So I didn't really get into it when I was six or seven. It was only when Tony Stewart took over and, and we started. I, I remember going to Don Valley. That's when I really mm. started to go, which <laughs> wasn't glamorous by any means. But <laughs> it, mean, it meant that I had a football team to support. Mm. You know, before then, I would just listen to my mate. I'm from Manchester, so I listened to my mates talk about United and City and watching United win Premier League after Premier League. It's like, oh, I want, I want someone to support. Like, I'd always, like, look for, like, I'd go with my mates and stuff, but it would never be the same. Mm. So, yeah, just to have a football club in general is just, uh, it's one of the best feelings in the world. And whenever people say, oh, I don't understand football, like, I completely get that, absolutely mm. do. But it's it's mental to think that, you don't understand it. It's 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 a weird it's a weird thing. <clears throat> it's just uh, what do you get satisfaction about twenty two men kicking a ball on a pitch? It's like what don't satisfaction do you get from it? You get all kinds of emotion, and yeah, it's just yeah. You can ask anyone who who's known you for the past five years. Like why? I feel like my life coincides with how Rotherham are doing, and it's it's, it's absolutely mental. <laughs> Last yeah, it's it's mental. Um. So yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't there for the Millmore days, but I was there for the Don Valley and the resurgence and all that. So, mm. you know, it's 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 so nice to, <laughs> you know, be um, <clears throat> just be part of a community. I guess mm. um, I can't imagine what it was physically like to wish not wish up all the way to imagine your club not being there. You know, I've I've you know I, I went to Bury a couple of times before it closed mm. down, and then to see that just you know go to part is is horrendous and yeah it's what well, it's a, it's a, it's a <clears throat> there's no there's no covering up that the club definitely needs some changes in mm, in terms of well. financial mm. investment and infrastructure and all that but yeah it, it gets to a point where you just imagine that it can't you know you don't want to be putting millions and millions into something that you don't have and yeah it's <clears throat> it's always it's always a tough call so whenever someone says i'll oh, just put more money in it's never as easy as that you always have to mm. go go through loads of financial loopholes and legal loopholes and whatnot and then when you eventually do get the money it's okay is this sustainable to actually you know you know if i if i spend this money am i in a horrendous amount of debt or not and you know you always got to look at a football club and you know you look at our football club and think it is ran 
accordingly. It's not going to put itself in any financial trouble, but there's definitely cracks that have been papered over and mm-hmm. they're, they're seeping through, and they need to be they need to be discussed and, and sorted out immediately. Um, mm-hmm. But that's 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 the, that's the only place where I'd, I'd say it, it falters as a as a club is, you know, training grounds obviously needs money invested in it there's the certain positions within the club that need a bit of a seeing too and but other than that you'd rather have a football club than none at all wouldn't you so mm. if, if you think of a football club as like a house uh, there's always bits of your house that need improvement no matter where you go there's always bits that need improvement and unfortunately Rotherham spent too much time on making the front room look nice and lovely whereas now it's time to address the kitchen um mm. And yeah. and, I, and that's just where we are, and I don't think we'll ever stop tinkering. It's just doing it in the right way um, to get the club moving forward. But just to sprinkle a little bit of history on this question, this time a hundred years ago, Rotherham County were floundering at the bottom of um, the third division north with their own money issues. You could say they were going towards administration if there was such a thing back then. Um, and then the following year, Rotherham United came about. Yeah, there's no, a yeah, merging yeah, between yeah. the two because again, yeah. Rotherham wasn't big enough for two professional teams, and I think it's just about big enough to handle a professional team now. <laughs> yeah, uh, DY says, even though we'll never be a big club, there's no excuse having training ground facilities that are not fit for public. Yeah. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. So, what, what, what we're all saying, what, what we just said, we're not defending the sort of the background, the situation of the club, we're not defending the training ground and things such as that, obviously, because it's not very difficult to defend that. Um, but I think what we said still stands. Uh, Sarah Ogden says, the feeling you get when Rotherham score, I wish you could bottle it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Race Mentler says, you don't have to spend above your means, just spend wisely. We signed four players, yeah. we did most of the previous season and paid to be on the trip. Yeah, if 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 we'd have bought, if you'd have bought properly, we wouldn't be where we are. The problem is that the signs at the summer have turned out to be crocs. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Miller says, you don't have to understand football. It's what it feels like in your heart. It's your hope, identity, purpose, and reason for hope. Yeah, I've I've got a sort of interesting question that I don't know if anyone wants to answer. But recently, Reading put their training ground up for sale, and Wickham offered to buy it for twenty two million. <clears throat> and I just I thought it was a curious proposition because I think if if we turn around and it was you know hypothetically within you know Chef United are selling their training ground, state of the art Prem training ground for twenty two million, and Tony Stewart goes, all right, I'll have that. Mm. I would not feel um, like it's the wise offer. I don't know if that's just me or. Mm. If anyone, I mean, it's an asset worth more than what you're paying, but you're still having to pay that amount. I mean, you get into a load of financial things, but well, well to be fair, we with him. They've um, had a look at the fine print and then gone, "Now nah, we're all right, actually." Yeah, because there's some there's some that cropped up that seems dodgy, so they just gone, "Nah, you're all right." Cheers. <laughs> it's a circumstance thing, isn't it? So you, if you look at Sheffield, Sheffield United are moving training grounds to a, to a somewhere else. So if Sheffield United's old training ground became available to purchase because they had a new one. Then for me that sort of works. That makes sense. The issue with Reading and Wickham was that essentially Wickham were helping asset strip a football club, mm. which is what was completely morally wrong about it. For, for me, for, from football is a business, but it's not really a business. There's, there's, mm. you're part of a collective. You're part of a ninety-two. Is hate each other, but also got to work together and <laughs> and try not to kill each, literally kill each other. <laughs> Which is what by selling the training ground would have done. It would have potentially helped kill the club, uh, mm. to kill Reading. Um, so if it's down, I think it's down to circumstance, Mick. Yeah. I, I think as, as as things come come to light in relation to that deal, I think it's quite clear there was something dodgy going off on both sides there, mm. um, and and it's suddenly been kind of swept under the carpet a little bit. And it, I think there was probably some dodginess on behalf of Reading's owner, which is hardly surprising. Um, and some dodginess on behalf of the uh, the Wickham owner. I, I understand. I might be wrong. I don't know. But is there's some potential new Reading owner in the pipeline who's also American? Georgian, uh, I think. Jo- well, Georgian. Is that as right? In the, Georgian, as in the country. In Georgia or in Europe or Georgia well, in America. They said Georgia. Now, now I think about it, it could be the American Georgia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, either way. Um, yeah, it, it just it all sounds a little bit dodgy, doesn't it? Mm. So, um, yeah, just see how that one pans out. But, um, yeah, the, look, look, Tony Stewart is doing a good job, he ain't doing a great job by any stretch mm. of the imagination. And the training ground and, and, and things like that are just a, 
another indication that he could do a lot better than he actually is doing. Mm. But, but I think we've covered the fact that ploughing money into it is just not the answer. No. Well, I'm sure we'll cover it again between now and May. Um, <laughs> uh, Danny, three more left. One to three. Uh, we'll go two. Two. Joshua Caswell says, do you reckon that Nombe will be best on the wing or as a central striker? He, he was very good mm. against Huddersfield, Danny, I thought, as, as a winger. Um, I don't know whether it was just because he had more room, whereas in League One as a striker, he will have that room. He will have that ability to run at the defenders a little bit more, whereas against Huddersfield was able to run a little bit more. I just maybe maybe he's still learning, nearly still to learn as a striker, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it seemed like you say he seemed to have just greater freedom just to move about a little bit on the wing. Um, but then again, in, in the championship, it all it tends to condense in the middle a little bit, and you get very little time in the ball, certainly in the middle. Um, and we've seen time and time again how, how much time other teams get on the wing um, against us. And that should be an us thing, I'm not sure. Um, but certainly in League One, there will be more time on the ball and Nombe will be able to find pockets of space. Um, but it, I suppose it'll be good to have that in his locker as well. And like we say, it, it flexibility for next season as well. So he can play as a striker himself or as a centre forward or out wide um, to potentially keep teams guessing and to line up out against different teams. Like if they're a bit stronger out wide, then, you know, go through the centre. But if they've got... You know, the, the stereotypical big lads at the back then play non by out wide to get in behind him. Mm. So, so I think it's, um, it, it'll be one of them seasons for non bay next season where he'll either come good and he'll be absolutely exceptional. A little bit like when we signed uh, Will Volks, he, was, he wasn't the best in midfield when we first signed him. And then as soon as he was in League One, he exploded onto mm. the scene as one of our better players. That could happen with Nombe, or um, the pressure is just too big of being the, the top signing, and he ends up being, you know, um, like one of the Nick Pope figures. Where, Tom. Where, the Tom Pope, sorry, yeah, Tom Pope figures, where it's like there's so much expectation, he's not hit it. Mm. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to see with Nombe. He's got it. He's got it in his locker, that's for sure. And for Exeter, he was very, very consistent um, in League One, but. Can we get the best out of him? That's Richardson's job for next season. So it'll be um, not make or break, but it'll be more character defining. I think it's the best way to put it. I think next season is the biggest season of his career mm. because if he if he doesn't have a good season next season, where does he go from that? From from what from with us as a football club and with, with him as himself, um, this season you can accept because he stepped up a level, so we can all sit here and say, "Ah, he's just taking the time to get into it." But if he if he if he has the same kind of season next season, Tom, then you've got to be asking serious questions about it. Yeah, I mean he's still young. I mean, it's yeah. 20, 25 at the minute, so he's he's not. He, yeah, it's 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 a it's a difficult one, I guess, because you have to agree. Like, if he doesn't have a good season next season, it's it's, it's future at this club anyway is is potentially mm. finished. Maybe not as him as a, a career defining, you know, not as quite career defining, but definitely club defining season mm. I it's odd um <clears throat> he definitely has the quality of a, of a winger pace power um you know he, he he can beat a man i think for pace and because of his pace and power chio never whipped out any kind of skill did he really he was just just, just quick <laughs> yeah just very quick and very powerful man um and he and he can put in a good delivery in all fairness to him non so you know maybe wing isn't his his, his worst shout but I, I I want to see him as a striker because I think that's what we mm-hmm. lack. And I think it, it, I, with any striker, as soon as you gain confidence, you you it usually works for you. I mean, look at Eves. Start of the season, we were laughing mm-hmm. at him, with him at him. You know, he was a bit of a fourth choice striker. Now you, if we don't start with Eves, you'd, you'd back that we don't score that game. So mm-hmm. funny things what confidence does to a striker. So I, I'd I'd start him up front, but f- fully prepared if he's on the wing to 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 see how he is on the wing because. Um, if you can get properly coached there, you might you may end up being a being a fantastic winger. Um, yeah. But for now, absolutely, I'd, I'd play him up front. Um, but I, I think he needs help up there. Don't think mm. he can do it by himself. Yeah, hundred percent. I think in a four three three, he could work as a as a as a right of a three mm. um, if if we chose to do that. Um, but Sarah just says central striker want him in the box. 
Um, Sam Scott Kent says he thinks Nombi will be our top scorer next season. Uh, oh. Josh Cashman thinks thinks he could be a Chio two point Thinks he has the ability to do so. Maybe not the pace, maybe. Um, because of Chio Lightning. Mm. I think the thing with Nombe is well, nobody knows. That's it. Mm. Well, nobody's giving him a chance. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you could count on two fingers the number of actual chances he's had to score goals this season. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's it, sort of like saying, well, he, 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 he's either going to be a top scorer or he's going to be absolute garbage or anything anywhere in between. Mm. Who knows? You know, we don't yeah. know what he's going to like in front of goal because he's, we've never given him ball in front of goal. Yeah. <laughs> True. Let's wait and see. I, I, for, for what it's worth, I think I think he'll he'll do very very well. Um, I think he's a work in progress, and and I think he'll he'll come very very good and, and hopefully make us a bit of money. Mm, yeah. Um, Sarah Oden says, I think, think he's got a lot to offer. Josh Caswell says yeah. he has chipped in with a few goals, two goals, two or three goals. Mm. For, the, for the money we've paid, it sounds sound very good, but for the chances we've created, it's probably probably about what you'd expect. Yeah, mm. it's not a bad return from, from the number of chances we've created. <laughs> he has less chances than he scored goals. <laughs> uh, there's only two questions left. We'll finish on a different one, but um, Big H, I think it is, on, on Discord. Mick, this is for you. This is for you. Yeah, uh, he wants to know, is the hair loss 100% Rotherham United related or are referees equally to blame? <laughs> <laughs> it's 100% referees to blame. <laughs> uh, I've been to Germany this weekend, right, watching American football, and I've been exactly the same boat <laughs> as that. <laughs> watching proper football. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, Mike, but it's, it's clearly me because <laughs> it's a different sport, and I'm still still don't understand. Uh, now it's um, I think it might be hereditary, <laughs> possibly. Um, but but right. yeah, the dad support Rotherham, man. He weren't he weren't best pleased with refs half the time, so it could be either. Or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, let us finish on Dave Thompson on Facebook says, which players do you think will go and who will stay? Which players? Oh, I'll just copy and paste it twice. That's the same question. Um, yeah, so there's Dave Thompson. So we have a graphic. Look at this. We've gone. Oh, <laughs> um, so basically, we've, we're in the middle list of who's out of contract, who's in contract. Who's on loan uh, and the length of contract? So I'll read it out just for the audio listeners. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've just seen the typo, and that's really funny. <laughs> Jordan, one? Jordan, hugely. The computer didn't like the Hugel, the Hugel um, Sorry, so, <laughs> I'll read, I'll read them out for the audio listeners. So out of contract in the summer: uh, Peltier, Morris, and Lucas Ferguson. Grant Hall, Cafu, Tyler Blackett, Jamie Lindsay, who might have an option, but we're not clear on. Oliver Rathbone does have an option, and Hakeem Doffin does have an option. We've got five loanees, which is Charlie White, Rinomota, Siriki, Revan, and Paya. And then that leaves us with the, uh, Tommy who's in contract for a year. Victor has another year, but has a relegation clause. Cam Humphreys, Dylan Phillips, Andre Green, Cohen Bramall, and Peter Kosa have a year left. Kosa might have two, I might, I might be wrong. Uh, Jordan Jordan hugely has two years left with Christie, and Sam Nombe has three years left on that. Um, Mick, mm. what are you doing? What are you doing with this lot? Because obviously the five loanies will obviously go back. How, let's start with the out of contract players. Uh, how many of the out of contract players are you excluding? Hacks and Oli, because I assume we'll extend those. Uh, how many of those are the ones that you're offering contracts to? Uh, Tyler Blackett, without a doubt. Um, Sam Clucas, without a doubt. Probably Jamie Lindsay um, as well. I think Shane Ferguson, much as I love him to bits, I think he's he, he may well be calling time on his professional career given the the uh, state of this injury that he just can't seem to shake off. Um, I think Lee Peltier, I'm not convinced he's got another year in him mm. with the greatest respect to Pelts. Sean Morrison... Possibly, but I don't think he'd drop down to League One. So I'd be looking at Sam Lucas there, hopefully, and Tyler Blackie. I, and to be honest, I can't see either of them dropping down to League One, if I'm perfectly honest with you. 
no. um, but 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 Morris and Lucas and and Blackett and and maybe Jamie Lindsay. Okay, so you so you let you letting Pelts and Ferguson and Grant Hall and Caffrey go. Well, I don't think Caffrey's going to stay, is he? There's no way he's going to play in champ in League One. Matt Tilly did Grant say Hall. we had an option on him. I don't, I don't know well, whether that's relegation dependent, but it, it did say there was an option for our, from our side. Uh, Grant him. Hall, I would definitely let go. Caffrey, yeah. I'd keep if we could, but I don't think um, I don't think that's going to I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Harry says I would keep Hall. Feel like he's got something to offer. On a golf day, everybody go in there, Harry. Well, um, right. So you'd offer what? Well, that you said four people, Mick. Mm. Yeah, yeah Morrison, four. Lucas, Blackett, and Lindsay. Okay, but but would you offer Cafu, but not expect him to take it? <clears throat> I'd have to. I'd have to give that a bit more thought. I think, Tom. Okay. Okay. Given where we're going to be and. What we're going to need in terms from our players, and I'm not convinced that Cathal is going to be able to offer that. At, you know, yeah. peeing it down with Ray not on a Tuesday night in Mansfield, I'm not convinced he's going to be Cathal's best place. Mm, yeah, not not wrong. <laughs> he lives out that way. I don't think he lives in Mansfield, but he lives in the Midlands area. Cathal, that's one of the yeah, reasons yeah. he came from apparently because he wanted to stay local ish. Um, Loney's Tom, how many of these Loney's could you see staying? Uh, Scott Kent thinks says, we'll think he thinks we'll sign Wyke. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. any other five yeah. you want to keep? Want to keep uh, Rinomoto, I think has been, yeah, has been arguably the best of the bunch for the loans. Um, without a doubt, really. Um, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? If you look at he, he couldn't get into Cardiff's side who are mid championship and he's come to us and he's yeah. been arguably his best player since joining. It's, just, it's a huge golf now, isn't it? So it's interesting. But I'd I'd also put Seb Rivan up there. I'd yeah. potentially loan him again or even sign him permanently. Um Villa have just signed that um he got he got loaned out to Plymouth. Um oh I can't remember his name. He's another left back, but they bought yeah, him. Yeah, I don't mean, mean though. Lino or something, Lino. I don't know, something like that, which hints at that you know maybe Revan has been pushed further down the pecking order. Who knows? But I, I yeah, I'd happily sign Revan on a permanent. I think he's twenty, what, twenty, twenty-one, and got mm -hmm. loads to offer um, as a as a <clears throat> solid, solid left um, left hand side fullback or even wing back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but the the rest, I know, I know. Chances are, Wyke, are probably, Wyke is probably going to join on a on a um, free. I think. I think, I think he's out of contract. Think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, he's he's not someone I'm desperate to see sign. I can I can see us signing him, and he's okay. But and he might he might find his feet in League One. But he's he's just the same type of profile that we've got with Eves and Hugh Gill. You, you you hope that we look elsewhere in terms of a profile of a striker, unless you're getting rid of. Hugh Gill or Eves. Um, <clears throat> sorry, hugely or Eves. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, in, in terms of loans, I, I'd only really take Rinomota back. Seems like there's actually an option to do that, as in, mm. you know, actually like potential to do that. Whereas Revan, I'd love to have him back, but I, I can't see... Vill the only way I can see him getting us back is if we buy him, and I don't know if we're going to risk spending that much money on a on a left back. So, mm. yeah, the, the others have been... Luckluster, to say the least. I think. Yeah, we have um, Danny on the in-contract players. Um, uh, is there any of those you can see leave it? Obviously, we'll talk about Victor in a minute. Um, are there any other the in-contract players you can see leaving? Um, I suppose it depends on Hugely's attitude towards League One and wanting to mm. play there. Uh, he might try and force a move through, or some sort of agreement might be reached if he really don't fancy it. Um, but other than that, other than um, you know the obvious ones that people might come in for, you know Victor and and Humphreys, um, I could see all of them staying. To be fair, because I know never trust what social media says. By the way, that's coming from from me, one at Younguns. But if you look at Kyoso's most recent Instagram post, it's all pictures of him in a Rotherham shirt. And then oh. the end video is someone talking about like if if you give him flowers, it except then it'll bear some sort of meaning or something. So maybe he's fit. No, 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 honestly, go on his Instagram, scroll through his latest pictures of all all of him in a Rotherham shirt this season, and there's something at the end 
um, talking about giving uh, giving somebody flowers and them doing well for you or something, and maybe he's feeling in the environment where we're giving him what he needs. Okay, and that's what and that's why he's put it out because he's quite cryptic with stuff like that, as we've yeah. seen <clears throat> before. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I think the obvious ones with that is, Vic, is Victor Victor's release clause being seven figure, so it's mm. bare mil, bare minimum a million. But we've been in that boat before. I mean, look at a Jay, for example, um, yeah. going for far less than what they were worth. Um, but at least it is a seven figure thing. I'm quite, I'm all right with that because it's not seven hundred and fifty k. If it was that, then there would have been legit riots. I think. <laughs> um, but I think I could see Humphreys going as well. But then again, he's not really been that prominent this season due to injuries. So do we offer him, you know, a, a, another year on top of what he's got now, just to get him bedded in and back on the grass a bit more? Um, and in all honesty, I'd keep Phillips purely as cover. Mm-hmm. I think I think keep that. I keep him. Um, until we find a replacement for Victor if he goes, like he's still if some maybe's right now, but just doing a bit of quick, a little bit quick working out. You can all disagree with what I'm about to say, by the way. I'm not, I'm not too fussed because you know it, next season's going to be fun, but I can see his needing between nine and fourteen new players in the summer. Yeah, and and oh. and, and, and nine's like the generous one where. Uh, Everybody who we offer contracts to stays, and mm. uh, we keep Victor and Humphreys. I'd say we we'll probably need nine new ones if everybody goes. In worst case scenario, it's fourteen, potentially more. I yeah. think. Yeah, we've got 10, 10, 10 players in contract plus Hacks and Ollie who, we, who we're, we're going to be activating. So we've got twelve players who are, who are going to be here next year. Victor will not be here next season. <laughs> There is wow. not a chance in a million million years that that, that somebody is not going to pay a million pounds for that guy because if if you buy him for a million pounds, he is instantly worth double that. So you, yeah, you, you you'd be stupid not to go in and pay a million pounds for him. He's gone. He's as good as gone. Um, so that puts us down to eleven players, and that's assuming that none none of the players that we offer contracts to, Sean Morris and Sam Club, that's assuming none of them are, none of them resign. Which means you need fourteen players to get it with twenty five. That means you need fourteen players, uh, like I said, Danny. So yeah, it's going to be a hell of a busy, busy window. Um, but we've, sure all the fans have been crying out for it. They all want a busy window. Now we've got one. For us as a podcast, it's great because last summer was so quiet to start with. For us to talk about stuff last year was very difficult. So we're hoping for a very early, early busy summer, so we can talk about stuff. <laughs> Uh, what um in regards to the loans as well, would you be interested? I know it didn't end the best, but would you be interested in seeing um Fred on Yudima back? I take Fred back. I saw I was talking to some Wednesday fans yeah. last night. I think if Michael Smith were available on loan, I'd take Michael Smith next season as well in League One. It'd be an absolute warrior for us in, in that league. Um mm. but he's on a lot I feel of like my, yeah. Yeah, I feel I like my was a bit more relevant than yours, but you know <laughs> <laughs> you, you threw that one in there for no reason. <laughs> On, on, on the Smith um, sudden discussion that's appeared, um, I think that only didn't, that would only happen if Wednesday stayed up. Yeah, and that's 100%. the only gay because otherwise they'll be utilising him somehow. Um, and I, I'd take Fred back if he's fit. We don't want another treatment room loan signing, do we? No, of course not. I think he's probably too good fit for League One, though, isn't he? I think that's the, the downside to it. Um... Shelley asked Mick, do you, does the seven-figure release clause, Victor, give us more chance that he'll stay? I just mentioned it then. Do you, do you think there's any chance in a million years that that, that Victor stays? Um, I mean, as, as everybody knows, we, we, we've all, we, we, we know Victor. We know, quite, we, we know him reasonably well. And we know he's mad. Yeah. <laughs> we know he's absolutely bonkers. But he ain't bonkers enough to drop down to leave one. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I, I caveat this. I caveat one with Sinai, but by saying that none of us here have any any information whatsoever. However, I just cannot see that he would influence negatively influence his career mm. by by dropping down to League One again when his ability is so much better than that. He's so much higher than that level. Um, you know, he's an international now. He's away with Sweden at the moment. I just, I just can't see how he would do that. Um, mad as he is, um, it, 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 
much as it pains me to say, I just I, I can't see after after the end of May, I can't see us seeing him in a Rotherham United shirt again um, in the foreseeable future, which is which is which is awful to say. But he needs to go. He needs to go top end Championship. He needs to go Premier League or, or into Europe because he needs to be playing at the highest level. Um, and we've said this before. You look through some of the keepers in in the Premier League. Even at the top end of the Premier League, and and he and he's better than some of them, um, so he can do it. I'm not saying he'd slot directly into a top end Premier League side. I'm not saying that obviously, unless it were Man United because he's better than their keeper, hands down. Um, I'm glad you that were on tip of me tongue, that man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that um, But but yeah, I mean, when, when Victor leaves, which I, in my view will be at the end of this season, he will go. 100% with with our best wishes, uh, but he will leave, I'm sure. I, I just cannot see him being a Rotherham United player next season. And, mm. and if he is, then once I find his phone number, I'm ringing him and giving him a, a rollicking for it. Father, <laughs> 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 you will come out and shout at him. Yeah, he will, yeah. Mm. <laughs> in, yeah. In, 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 with the greatest of respect and in the, in the best possible sense of this term, he needs to be gone. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and oh, we know he, you know, he, you know he basically loves the club. We know how much how he feels about the yeah. club. But yeah, he's got to go. Yeah, sadly. Um, and hopefully, from a, from a, from a, from a selfish point of view, let's hope the, let's hope it's decent enough money, and that money is used in a proper way, so yeah. he can build again for next season a little bit. Um, yeah. And that'd be great, almost a legacy for Victor that he's able to push help us push on by getting some money in for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about where he stands in the list of greats when it, when he leaves because I don't think you should do that while I still play for you. Um, yeah. One thing I'll just chip in with with Victor, um, this will <clears throat> be out at some point, but a little research project of mine at the minute is like looking at um, how long a shirt number has been held by a singular player and how long a shirt number has been in continuous use through like this um, since the turn of the millennium. Um, Victor's joint top, longest serving number one. At this football club, uh, he's joined with Mike Polly and Andy Warrington. Fair enough. There you go. Both of which were at the club longer, but not in the same shirt longer. What what number did Polly have? Um, he, he was he was number one, but he was before the turn of the century. Oh right, okay. And then uh, Warrington dropped down to number thirteen for his final two seasons. Yeah, he did. That were a travesty. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Shelley says, have you seen enough for Dylan Phillips to think he'll be number one if Victor goes? Are we confident in him? No, he's a number two for me, Dylan Phillips. Mm. So we'll, just, we'll just pick up somebody else. Uh, probably alone. If you want, if you want me to guess now, I'll be alone from a Premier League club. But Derby have got a decent keeper who I don't think gets a game every week, haven't they? Yeah. I, I would Victor, have him back could very well go to Derby next season, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mm. I, 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 would have, I would have him back in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Swap, we'll swap, swap Victor for Vickers. I wouldn't swap. Yeah. It wouldn't be a swap because obviously there'd have to be some money coming our way as oh, well. Yeah, swap, swap plus a million quid. So I'd have Josh Vickers back. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I would. I think, like injured, I think he's injured. I think he's injured at the minute. By the way, well, he's always injured. Isn't he? That's the <laughs> issue. I think. Yeah. yeah. That's the only thing I'd say. Um, about him. Matt, how do you know Phillips is not a number one keeper? I don't think he's been a number one keeper anywhere. Um, at the cup games that he played against Morecambe and Stoke, he didn't look anything. Only two games. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, they're one-off games, aren't they? He's a professional footballer and paid to be so. So he's he's, he's going to be at a level. It's whether he's going to be consistent enough. And the, and the problem we're going to have any goalkeeper that pulls on that Rotherham United number one shirt, the next one that pulls that on, it is 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 on a hiding to nothing really. So uh, that's uh, you know that's why it needs to be somebody we know like Josh Vickers, or we know, you know, he's got some history and we know he can do it. Yeah. Let's wait and see. Um, yeah. That's all the questions we've got. We've gone along. As, was, as was, was it, there was a start question um, from earlier on, wasn't there? Where is it? Uh, yeah, um, we're going to from Shelley. Shelley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll save that, Shelley. Send us some Shelley next time. We'll do another mailbag at the end of the season. Uh, now because we've, we've got the gaps now between now and then. Um, so send us if you send them now, well, I'll, I'll flag them up them and try and make sure they're in, they're in for the next mailbag episode. Are there no, no more international breaks? No, thankfully. 
Um, and we're in League One next year, where technically there aren't either. But we're none. Mm. Until we mm. Northern Irish internationals, and then, then you know, and that game yeah. gets called off because there's yeah. too many. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, anything else, boys? That you want to mention? No, I just mentioned Victor. There's a chance Victor might be playing tomorrow. As friendlies, Victor didn't play in the first friendly, so there's, I think there's a reasonable chance he'll play against Albania, which is at home in Sweden. Um, watch out for that. Andy Rinomoto won for Zimbabwe through to the final of that Four Nations trophy. Hey. Um, it's one of his won more games for Zimbabwe this year than he's won for Rugby United. <laughs> uh, out of one game, so that's great. <laughs> that's really good. Oh dear, um, yeah. Anything else, boys? Uh, I think so. I'll go for mm, I think so. Good. Uh, thank you for being with us. We will be back on Thursday. Yes, Thursday. It's Easter, Easter weekend, isn't it? So there's two games coming up. Friday away at Preston, and then we're at home to Millwall. Um, I am on the Wednesday week tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm going on the Wednesday week. Probably they're doing a relegation spe uh, rival special. And for some reason, they've had a Rotherham representative on <laughs> to talk about the relegation. <laughs> um, but... are, are, you, are you just there to back up numbers, Matt? Like... I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, well, they sort of have to be here, don't they? Like, because they're not down yet. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so if you fancy something on a Monday night, that'll be on the Wednesday weeks. Uh, I'll try and stream it through our channel, through YouTube, through our YouTube, if we can. If not, it's over on the Wednesday week. And like I said, we'll be back on Thursday for that. Uh, to preview what... Yeah, we could be relegated on Friday, boys and girls. So, yeah, that's to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Should anyway. we, we have a party when we get relegated just to like, make everyone feel a bit better? <sighs> it's coming no matter what, I think. Yeah, yeah get, get past you can't... that. <laughs> what a part when the season finally ends. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mick, thank you very much for being with us tonight. I know you've been busy this weekend, but thank you for turning up. It's been a long weekend, man. Matt. A long weekend. Shout out to Ben, our Ben, who's um, banging a few more touchdowns for Academy over the last two games as well. Mm. So uh, doing well is the boy. Yes. I'm trying to get back up podcast soon. Uh, he didn't get smashed up, which is a shame. I was really looking forward to no. the conversation together. Um, but yeah, he anyway. took a couple on Saturday. If I'm if I'm if I'm honest, he took a couple of late <laughs> ones, which we only was in. But yeah, I'll see if Fair I get enough. some fun of them. Don't worry, <laughs> uh, Danny. A pleasure as always, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me, lads. And Tom, a, leg a legend for turn up again. Thank you, mate. No worries. Good group, good group therapy. <laughs> what we do. <laughs> um, thank you all for being watching with us. We'll see you next time. And as always, up the Millers. Up the Millers. Up, up the, the Millers. millers. It's a wild, wild shot goal. Slossy beyond Bodringer. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby. Oh. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Bodrum United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box for Duffy, he can hit them, and he does. Oh! Yeah! The Duffy! Oh, and that's got an absolute screamer for Rotherham United. Rotherham United have secured their championship status for next season.